Today I'm going to talk about the specific on in shale gas. We are focused on trying to understand the flow behavior in shale in shale, this kind of ultra tight pulse medium, what's different from conventional kind of pulse medium? What's kind of research challenge for us? Yeah. But I would like to talk a little bit about uh, our group. Then you will see uh, what we are, we are quite new to the field, really. So we are working in kind of related uh, uh, field. But uh, what we see, probably some uh, approach, some our kind of current understanding may help to to improve the plex current kind of methodology commonly used in this quite a new research area in uh, ultra tight pulse medium kind of flow. So. The group I work in is just got the so-called James Weir Fluid Lab. So um, we do not, uh, we are not like a geo center. You have uh, a bunch of uh, people working in really different area. Yeah, it's a kind of very multidisciplinary kind of research area. Yeah, for us, people, eight academics, all folks in kind of fluid dynamics work together. So. In terms of application, we kind of cover quite a very broad range of application from traditional kind of uh, design racing car, uh, turbine machinery, then to recently we, our focus is being like a micro nanoscale flow problem, like microfluidics, MEMS, NEMS. That's uh, where we see the close link with the uh, policy medium. So that's why uh, a few years ago we start to uh, to work on policy media. So the today I'm really talking about uh, the flow physics at uh, this kind of ultra tight mm -hmm. policy media. Why it's different from conventional kind of policy media? What? why some current approach may have problem and where we may can make our contribution. Yeah? But it's still quite a new kind of uh, area. We, some, something we think we have identified the some problem, but we still need to provide a solution. How can we provide a solution? Like a, it's just kind of we are mainly working on theoretical computational. So we hope to work with Matt, your uh, colleagues here, if you have like us for digital imaging or to experiment, work together. You, we may uh, provide a kind of better way for understanding of uh, shear gas type of flow. I guess this you guys know better than me. This is a typical shell image. Yeah. So you can see the, a lot of very tiny, uh, tiny pores. Pore can be a few nanometers, 600 pore space in terms of. And uh, this is an example of people try to understand the uh, flow behavior or predictable permeability type of uh, sample. So you need uh, this type of digital image, which you can see how these pores are linked together, how f fluids can move through this uh, material. Yeah. So that's uh, for for our type of uh, study. We really need uh, this kind of image. How? Poor structure, poor geometry change, poor structure, poor connectivities. We can do some uh, computational uh, study on this. So, what makes uh, flow gas flow in uh, pulse media like a shell? That's a very tiny pore, different from conventional pulse media. 
One is uh, gas flows are verified. Yeah. I guess a lot of you guys already uh, uh, aware of this. Recently, we can see a lot of new publications about how to consider the effect in, uh, in predicting the permeability of shear. So, rarefaction, rarefied gas dynamics, that's exactly what, what we have been doing. Yeah. So, traditionally, it's uh, working on the like uh, uh, space aircraft or vacuum technology where the density of the gas is very low. Yeah. So, relified, its uh, gas is relified, low density. But the recent uh, years, because of micro nanotechnology, yeah, a lot of technological development in, at that end, that's what we have been working on in MEMS, NAMS, because of the reduction of the uh, system di uh, dimension, which we need to consider flow at that micro nano scale has relified. Yeah, I will talk uh, more later about uh, uh, this. But uh, this kind of equipment usually operate at uh, kind of normal pressure condition, yeah? Not a vacuum anymore, but uh, quite a normal <coughs> pressure. But in shell, this kind of production, pressure can be high, yeah? So although uh, shell pore spaces uh, can, can be very small, a few nanometers. And uh, gas under this kind of a few hundred bars of this kind of condition, or CO2, when you inject CO2 underground, uh, sometimes, yeah, pressure is high. So they behave differently from normal gas, really. You sometimes, it's dense gas can be uh, uh, super critical, critical fluid. So this uh, makes like a uh, gas transport in uh, this kind of ultra tight approximately different from conventional pore. Here's an example of uh, a bias shell. Yeah. You can see the, the this uh, the is a uh, underground lens, how uh, the deep how deep it goes. So around uh, this to uh, two thousand meters yeah, two kilo kind of underground. So you can uh, you can see the pressure here will be very high. Yeah. So shale gas production, the transport of the gas in the tiny nanopores under high pressure. That's uh, usually the case. And also, we need to consider this is a gas is a highly confined. Pore space, nano pore space. We need to consider if you have a few nanometers across of the pore, like methane, this type of molecule, the size itself is nearly about half of nanometer itself. So it's uh, not a conventional continuum kind of media anymore. So you need to consider confinement effect, which make a huge difference. And uh, another, uh, from fluid dynamics point of view, for us, it's uh, quite difficult to consider this surface absorption, surface diffusion, yeah, into fluid, dy uh, fluid dynamics simulation. Because in shale gas, a lot of uh, gas molecule is absorbed to the surface, in, stored in nanopores. So if you look at the balance shell production uh, rate, yeah, against time, initially, it's the production rate drop very quickly because the free, free molecules, gas molecules, can be pro produced a chapter very quickly if you apply pressure, yeah? It's a, but then it goes down very long period of very flat production rate. Just because most, when free gas molecules are gone, most 
gas molecules, shell gas stored in the in shell, which is uh, it takes time to migrate, yeah, to be attracted. So that's a, so that's a, from tiny pore the transport of gas is dominated by surface diffusion, which the time scale compared with the pressure driven flow time scale is different to sm slow. So that's why surface diffusion this kind of is important for uh, shale gas type of uh, uh, simulation. So this is uh, uh, one example of our MD simulation on a tiny section of kind of this uh, uh, silicon surface. Yeah, we made a, this molecular silicon molecules. Yeah, this is a Neeson molecules. You you apply this. Uh, we just uh, randomly generate. We don't know what exactly kind of geometry will be, but uh, the the key point is uh, we can yeah. If we know what kind of geometry it will be, we can generate a different shape of geometry. Then we can inject different type of molecules. Then we can see like uh, how. It's an absorbed surface, yeah. You can e even see that this is somewhere going to, uh, in, into the silicon surface uh, molecular layers as well. So you can predict the surface diffusion rate on this kind of molecular dynamic simulation. So the because the uh, gas flow in this kind of shell is very different from normal pulse media. <coughs> the question is really we cannot apply what we got so far for over the decades we have like from Darcy law or this theory available for normal uh, pulse media. Can we apply this direct to the shell gas type of ultra tight pulse media? The answer is, uh, is no really because flow physics is very different. So first question, now a lot of people are trying to address is, uh, can we consider rarefaction effect yeah, in when we develop new models? But that's not in, enough. We need also consider surface interaction, surface diffusion. Yeah? So this is uh, very important for shale gas production. And uh, Another point, really, we needed to, this, because of the shale gas operation always a high pressure, this point is usually kind of people don't pay attention to because the gas now really operate at a kind of dense gas, not a conventional gas anymore. It's under really fine confinement. This will make gas flow very differently from conventional flow. So that's what we need to consider as well. Another challenge for us specifically, because we want to computationally predict the like permeability of a core sample. Yeah? The reality is a computational cost because of the interconnected pores. The aspect ratio is a huge. So if you want to resolve flow field inside the individual pores, the amount of mesh number, grid number is a huge. So it will generate a lot of data and cost computationally very, very costly. So we need to develop a kind of efficient um, a computational method to deal with that. That's what, what we are we aim to do. So I, when I prepare this lecture, I think I assume some of you are probably not familiar with this, uh, uh, what the rarefied flow is. So I try to explain a little bit of background of this. If you know uh, fluid mechanics, like if you are aware of the Darcy law, this type of build on the hydrodynamics, which assume fluid is a continuum, yeah, continuum media. So that's a, 
uh, usually based on the Navier-Stokes equation you develop or this theory. But now, when flow is uh, ratified, it uh, can be very different. We you usually use like this so-called losing lay, a losing number. Yeah, a lot of uh, people in press media are familiar with losing number, losing uh, diffusion. So losing number is a ratio of mean free pass, gas mean free pass compared with the length scale of system, like a pore space, yeah? So when Newton number is uh, going uh, towards zero, basic mean hydrodynamics usually uh, valid, it's uh, kind of working at a continuous regime. But when Newton number is, uh, is high, like this example is uh, for air at a normal, uh, uh, of its uh, normal condition, you will have mean free pass like a 67 nanometer sort of uh, scale. Then if you are dealing with a um, uh, more micro, this type of MEMS, this kind of flow, you will have a new number of 0.1. That means at this state, the refraction is very important. Yeah. That's give you kind of estimate. For shell gas, if you operate at the 100 bar, so your mean free pass will be around the one nanometer-ish. Then if you think about the pore space size is a 10 nanometer, so you will get a sim similar Newton number. Basic means really we need to consider the refraction fact. It's very important. So from fluid dynamics point of view, yeah, this all right equation probably you are not, uh, you do not care about this. It's usually aerodynamics people uh, using a lot of all right equation. Basically, Newton number is zero. You use it. Then, Navier Stokes equation condition Newton number is uh, small. That's a kind of rough uh, criteria. When Newton number increase, at People try still want to use the Navier Stokes, but you need to consider the lost slip at the surface. So you will notice uh, uh, gas flow have slip velocity at the surface. So if you build in slip uh, boundary condition, you can still apply Navier Stokes. Yeah. Try, but uh, you will, of course, once the number in, uh, increase further, then you, your error will be bigger and large. In, uh, increase as well. Then you get into so-called uh, transition regime. You cannot really apply Navier Stokes. So everything has to be built. If you build uh, your theory model on Navier Stokes, yeah, so you cannot uh, use this anymore because you have ratified effect. So this is a classic uh, uh, experiment on MEMS. It's a very simple, not a press media, it's a micro channel. You can see it's a very wide, 53 micron wide, yeah, around, and a narrow, uh, narrow channel, it's a 1.33 micron depth. Yeah, this channel. If we apply, inject gas in, and uh, measure gas out, apply pressure difference, across the, this channel. Then what we will find, what happened to flow rate? Can we predict this flow rate <coughs> right? Using what type of model? Yeah, so at this kind of Newton number region, that's outlet, outlet Newton number, yeah, 0.16. You will see, you apply different pressure, yeah, pressure ratio here. You measure the mass flow rate. This is, uh, dots are, square ball, uh, dots are experimental measurement. This is a Navier-Stokes prediction using a non-slip boundary condition. So predict the mass flow rate 
compared with experimental data is a kind of about 40% difference. So the reason is uh, for this kind of news number around 0.16, the rarefaction effect is important. So in pulse media kind of community terminology, we so called you need to consider slip, you need to consider news and diffusion to correct this. Yeah. So if we apply so called gas kinetic theory to predict, we can very accurately capture whole mass flow rate. For this kind of simple geometry, the prediction is very accurate. So the point is uh, when rarefaction effect is important, we need to consider the rough slip at the surface, which make a huge contribution to the increased mass flow rate. And uh, Newton diffusion, so called Newton diffusion, is uh, um, also make contribution as well. Now we talk about uh, Newton diffusion. I just, because we use kind of different terminology in our field, really, it's, uh, it's difficult to separate, really, uh, Newton diffusion and the slip, what's their contribution to the overall mass flow rate. So that's, um, uh, this is a kind of detailed velocity profile at, at the surface. You can see this may explain to uh, kind of to you how rarefaction make contribution to mass flow rate. This is a primary wall. If you have only just uh, apply a, a shear force, yeah, you have a shear flow. So to this close to the surface, there's so called a Newton lay, which is about a one one mean free pass thickness. Beyond uh, this Newton lake, this bulk region, its uh, velocity profile is uh, linear. Yeah, that uh, can be captured by navy Stokes. But uh, within this Newton lake, velocity profile is this uh, the black line is a curvature. Yeah, nonlinear profile. And uh, navy Stokes with non slip boundary condition, you predict this blue line. That's a velocity profile. Yeah. So, the actually there's a velocity slip. This is the amount of velocity slip here. So velocity slip needed to be considered. So if you apply slip boundary condition with navy Stokes, you will predict this yellow line profile. Yeah. So if you are using yellow line velocity profile to calculate the mass flow rate compared with the blue line, you will get a kind of increased mass flow rate. But in reality, this profile is this nonlinear. So here is a, another part of uh, mass flow rate increase. I guess this probably means in post media is a contribution made by Newton diffusion. Just uh, because of the navy Stokes kind of relation, constitutive relation does not work here in Newton Lake. So you have additional contribution. That's it for a simple planetary flow, yeah, of a planetary surface. So if I give you an example, if a planar kind of uh, poison flow, pressure jet flow, yeah, at this type of Newton number, 0 0.05, you will compare uh, the real mass flow rate will be 15% higher than if you apply navy Stokes with non-slip boundary condition. Yeah. Then if you apply slip boundary condition, you will get this correction of the mass flow rate. So 15 Seventy percent or fifteen percent is caused by slip boundary uh, slip, but another thirty percent is caused by so-called Newton diffusion. 
for this simple geometry. But in reality, is for two type of contribution, losing diffusion contribution or uh, slip contribution, is difficult to separate because flow over the curve of the geometry, the losing layer is uh, changing a lot. Yeah, it's and also depends on what type of slip boundary condition you use. Yeah. In our field, we always use this type of so-called uh, uh, fixtures, fixtures kind of velocity uh, boundary condition to correct uh, uh, stress, yeah, the wall stress, which is for mechanical engineers, it's a very important design simulation. Then we use with navy strokes to get correct wall stress to and get correct mass flow rate. So we don't consider losing diffusion. We can get mass flow rate right with the prop different use of slip boundary condition. So my point is, uh, later we'll see, it's difficult to separate contribution of slip flow and uh, losing diffusion contribution to overall mass flow rate. That's what has been doing in this field in press media flow. Now we come to yeah, what parts media community has been doing. For we know the Darcy law, yeah, mass flow rate or volume flow rate or whatever you relate to if this is Darcy permeability and applied pressure, yeah, kind of proportional to this, it's well understood. So Darcy permeability is a, a kind of only depends on the price structure material, nothing to do with uh, what kind of fluid you put, uh, inject into. Yeah, that's uh, works well for conventional one. Then of course you want to uh, have like, if you think uh, uh, you operate at a high Leibniz number, you have different correction of that. Yeah. So then people think, okay, from previous example for a simple channel, straight channel, we have we can see refraction play a role, yeah. So the first historically, Klingberg, Klingberg uh, collected this to counter for so-called slip velocity effect. You have this, yeah. You, I guess you are familiar with this. This B term. Everything put in here, which this B term de depends on the Newton number essentially, and the so-called TMSC. Tangential momentum accumulation coefficient, which describes how gas molecule interaction with wall. The when gas hits the wall, the tangential momentum exchange with surface, which can be zero for ref specular reflection, and for diffuse reflection is one. Yeah. So these people use this really to collect this, and uh, all geometrical kind of effect all included at this Darcy permeability itself. So here correction you is easy and clear. Everything only depends on flow condition. Yeah? You can correct this. The problem comes now for shear gas. Now people think okay, like look at the water we see in flow in nanotube or this. We see the contribution of the Newton diffusion. How can we put it into this kind of Darcy type of model? People assume, okay, now we put another correction point, another correction factor, if we call uh, Newton uh, permeability correction term, this. <coughs> Usually people put it in here, not inside this. Then the other question, this correction point is a function of not only of flow properties, flow conditions, like a Newton number, uh, uh, this kind of TMSC, also depends on the pulse media structure. Yeah? So then this, you have too many kind of unknowns, which is uh, really difficult to validate this type of model. 
That's why you will see a lot of different model available. You can you uh, you, uh, you can choose what you like. But uh, the problem for us is, uh, can we really validate or or change all the this type of approach using a a new type of approach? So what I see like. Uh, all these uh, parameters, uh, TMSC and uh, the like, uh, tortuosity, this uh, roughness, all these kind of parameters used as a conveniently tunable parameters to get results you want. Yeah. And interestingly, like TMSC, has been used uh, from like uh, point zero one to one. It's. Uh, for us, it's really difficult to understand. Only for carefully manufactured kind of surface, you can get to very low TMSE. Yeah. For natural material, I would think most likely you can use one. You don't need to use any value below than one for rock, this type of material. So. In, for pulse media like a shell, really we can remove this parameter out of equation. So remove one uncertainty, just assign to one. That's good enough. But in reality, if you check the uh, uh, publications, you will see they use this to this parameter to get what results they want. That's uh, this type of approach. Yeah, you, have, you can find uh, quite many different models. And uh, more probably interestingly, this also depends on so-called Darcy permeability. Yeah, Darcy permeability is uh, well understood in conventional parts media. But the real question is, uh, is there same kind of Darcy permeability ex available for nanopores? The currently, people like this is a, for this type of very uh, low permeability um, uh, uh, material. People use pulse decay experiment. Yeah, just uh, pressure drop against time. They can measure. They use. They assume Darcy law is valid under this kind of high pressure, small pressure gradient. To in interpreted results, they can predict the Darcy permeability. But for nano, this type of nanopores, this is really is a questionable. The so-called Darcy permeability will very likely depend on the what type of fluid or gas you put in. Because this is a not a normal uh, hydrodynamics continuum uh, medium. This is a highly confined flow. So molecular features are really important even under high pressure, which means mean free pass is small. Yeah. So reflection effect probably is not important, but it's a dense gas effect confinement effect needed to be considered. So there's no such conventional Darcy permeability here. Then using this type of pulse decay experiment, I would think it's built on kind of wrong theory to predict Darcy permeability itself. So there's a lot of things needed to be done to correct this. So I would think uh, instead of building all the, the foundation on like uh, hydrodynamics and Navier-Stokes type of continuum uh, fluid dynamics theory, we need to really look into gas kinetic theory. Yeah. So people start to, to do this. So gas kinetic theory really, if you are familiar with it, this is uh, like a 19th century, two, these two people really uh, set the foundation. 
uh, Boltzmann, this is a Scottish scientist that everyone knows, Maxwell. So they build up uh, this type of two. So so called so celebrate the <coughs> Boltzmann equation set the foundation for the gas kinetic theory. For Boltzmann equation, this uh, U F is a kind of molecular distribution function. It's a kind of statistical way to uh, to consider uh, collective motion of molecules, gas molecules. Yeah. <coughs> so this equation is built on two assumptions. Gas is, is for valid for dilute gas. Basically, means gas collision is a two binary collision. So only two molecules, gas molecules, can collide at the same time, not three or four or five. So it's for dilute gas and the molecular chaos. So basically means F molecular distribution function is a, uh, only single molecular distribution function can work. So two molecular uh, distribution function can be separated independently by single molecular distribution function. So under this assumption, we, uh, we can, uh, this Boltzmann equation is valid. So from Boltzmann equation, we're using conventional like a uh, chaplin multi multiscale expansion against uh, a small Newton number. You can recover Navier-Stokes equation at first order on Newton number. Yeah. So Navier-Stokes can be recovered at the small Newton number end. But it also works when Navier Stokes does not work. Okay, this is a gas kinetic theory. I'm not going to detail, but uh, I want to see, show some example. It's uh, because for porous medium, if you read the uh, uh, literature, you will find a lot of Speculation really build on the like uh, results on straight channel or straight pipe, yeah. Then you upscale to pulse media. But in pulse media, especially like a shell, this uh, flow is a stretch of passage is much more complex. There's a, a lot of you know curvature <laughs> or flow. More importantly, flow expansion contraction. That make a huge difference. How can we describe this? This example, like uh, if we apply pressure at a straight channel yeah, to end. Now this, uh, we bend this channel and uh, we have double bend. Yeah. You apply same kind of, you travel distance same pressure uh, apply pressure across the channel the same. Then you can see the mass flow rate on these two cases. Yeah, this is a, a one a is a single bed. Yeah, this bed compared to this straight channel, you can see it's very much depends on the Newton number. It varies a lot. But for double bend, the mass flow rate also varies can be larger, can be smaller. This is an accurate uh, uh, DSMC sim uh, simulation results. Yeah. So you can see the big difference like here. And uh, this here, you don't really know uh, flow contraction expansion here, really. So if you have considered this more complicated real geometry, that's uh, much, much more complicated. So I just always curious about using uh, like a data from C channel, C pipe to upscale to get a sort of Darcy law, whether this uh, is use useful. And the conventional like poor network model, can it really apply to na nanoscale pores? I don't know. But, but uh, in this field, uh, probably is difficult to validate a lot of models. So like if we do some uh, simple test on like if we put a, 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 in a channel, we put a one 
uh, cylinder inside the channel. Yeah. So what happened to the the permeability? Again, this is the simulation result of the uh, permeability change against the Newton number. You can see permeability increase a lot. That's a for simple geometry. Only one uh, the one block inserted into the channel. Yeah. So the change of mass rate at the high Newton number end is uh, massive. But once you have this type of more complicated uh, geometry, the change of the mass flow rate permeability at the high Newton number end becomes smaller, reduced. So geometry plays a big role here. So, and also people try to separate the effect of Newton diffusion to the mass flow rate. We just want to test on really Newton diffusion, is it important or not? Newton diffusion, if we think like uh, for, for simple straight channel, yes, it's very important, make a, quite a bigger in, uh, contribution. But for once you have increase the kind of complexity of the geometry, so the importance, I, I think, is reduced. Here, this is mass flow rate against Newton number. Yeah, this is also mass flow rate against Newton number for this uh, setup. Here, if you think about the red line is a kind of accurate solution. Yeah. For this relatively simple geometry, if you uh, only solve slip flow without so-called uh, like effective use of never stick with uh, uh, first order slip boundary condition, you can exclude the so-called Newton diffusion effect. Yeah, what you with increased Newton, but what you get the result here. So you will have quite a big difference in terms of prediction on the mass flow rate. But uh, once you increase this uh, complexity of geometry, the difference uh, becomes smaller, very small difference. And uh, this we test on the so-called uh, lab model. Using this, uh, they use kind of barrier pattern to build on lab 2D model. Yeah. So this uh, white part is a pore, pore space void. So you can see this is a pore space is a kind of change a lot in terms of there's a lot of expansion, contraction, yeah, geometry change. So what they made is a quite larger uh, uh, kind of uh, size. So we use this to, to scale down to nano kind of meter this kind of uh, size, we can do this, some test simulation. What uh, this line predicting is uh, without uh, consider Newton diffusion, this prediction of the mass flow rate is exactly the same. So the question is uh, really we need to put in Newton diffusion correction for real pulse medium as what people have been doing. Uh, because this makes correction really complicated. Is it sensible? Also, what we want to do really is, uh, like if we know the geometry, yeah, we can learn whole simulation to direct uh, predict the flow inside the pores. Then we can calculate the mass flow rate, uh, pressure drop, we can we can calculate the permeability. Yeah. That's, but uh, that's really rely on how uh, the quality of the image itself. It's, it's, a, it's a task as well, it's challenging. 
So if anyone can provide this, this kind of accurate, uh, highly resolved image, and that would be very useful. And it's, it's I tried to, uh, but because video doesn't work here in this case, that's one case we do simulation how flow moving through the, the porous medium. Yeah, that's a sort of uh, experiment we can do. Yeah, it, it doesn't work in, on this computer. But I would think uh, we really needed to look at, uh, to build up a different type of model compared to the current uh, kind of approach. First, one thing is uh, try to reduce compressibility uh, capacity of the introduced like a Newton diffusion correction, which depends on so many unknown parameters. Like uh, instead uh, we can put uh, like uh, if this C is a Newton kind of correction, we can build into like Klingsberg this type of correction. Into inside here, this leaves the effect of the material geometry at uh, so-called uh, Darcy permeability to handle that. And because Newton correction is not as important as a slip correction. Yeah? And we can like a TMC, just assume it's, uh, it's one. That probably will work. But uh, another question is, uh, like I just said, uh, Newton, uh, Darcy permeability, will it still valid for nano pores. The reason is uh, probably not is uh, the gas at for shell gas type of uh, condition is always a uh, dense gas, not dilute gas. Dilute gas we built on this Boltzmann equation for dilute gas. Then now because at a kind of if we miss a uh, molecular size of 0.5-ish nanometer compared with a pore space, like a 10. So one pore, how many molecules can land up? Very limited number. So, and uh, mean free pass compared with the molecular size, yeah, is uh, also this ratio is small. So, like uh, this guy treats the dilute gas, is a molecule can regard as a point force. All the collision is uh, instantaneous, and the only interaction between two molecules, nothing to do with the molecule far away. Now you need to consider this molecule interact with, uh, like a molecular dynamic simulation, you need to consider molecule beyond your neighboring molecules. That's so-called the dense gas effect. This n has sort of modified, extend the Boltzmann equation. Because Boltzmann equation is complicated, this this term, yeah, integral term. That's a, a lot of fields uh, prize uh, awarded to how to deal with Boltzmann equation itself, that's mathematically. So uh, he extended uh, the non-local interaction, make this term even more complicated to deal with. Very few people can really, very few groups in the world can really solve Anscock equation. To, but it's really important to validate, although it's very expensive to solve Anscock equation, like a molecular dynamic simulation type, to see the effect. That's what we have done. We direct solve Anscock equation to see exam on very simple geometry is a nano channel, yeah? So what we study is uh, one is a mean free pass. Mean free pass usually you compare with the mean free pass of gas, compare with the, uh, the pore space. Yeah. Then another fact is the so-called uh, confinement fact. If this L is a pore space, you compare with the diameter of the molecules. So once you have this, uh, this extreme case, diameter is a, a molecule similar with the pore. 
then you reduce to 50. Yeah. So we solve the answer equation, you get uh, all this data. The red one is the bottom equation. Remember, bottom equation can lead to Navier Stokes, yeah? Can recover Navier Stokes at the low end of this number. So even at the confinement of ratio of 50, that's probably, for a lot of shale gas cases, this confinement can be lower towards like 20, 30. Yeah. So the mass flow rate big prediction at this end, low number end, you can see, compared with the bottom solution, it's a huge difference. So if you look at uh, like experimentally, you uh, probably, I, I'm not sure, uh, this. Experimentally, you use Navier-Stokes kind of based Darcy law to predict uh, the, this result. You will see the difference because they don't consider confinement effect. but. Uh, for a thing, this is a small, uh, a uh, small nano channel. It's a straight channel, simple geometry. Yeah, you have bigger difference. For porous medium, probably difference is not that big, but it still will be significant. I don't know how significant. It's uh, very expensive to solve. Yeah, but uh, we can expect it quite significant because the difference is uh, really big. Oh, sorry. So. Really, can we use uh, this kind of experiment current uh, technique to measure the permeability? That's built on probably a wrong theory. We need to correct this. But how? It's another question. It's, uh, that's why I look for some people who can provide experimental data to work with us. So. Overall, we need a kind of new framework to help engineers to use because uh, our really want to, what our approach is too expensive computationally as well. So it's not practical to do, but uh, we want to from this kind of uh, direct stimulation, we simulate on the digital image we get, direct solve the flow, then you predict or you have full information which can help to build this type of simplified model, which can then plug into upscaling model. This can use for, for uh, reservoir simulation type. Yeah. But we really want to make sure all these type of per, uh, parameters we introduce, we know how to determine that. Not like currently you put all these unknowns or tunable parameters all together. It's uh, really not uh, People don't know how to use that, really. And uh, before that, we haven't talked about uh, one additional challenge, that's surface diffusion, yeah? In a lot of cases, surface diffusion is uh, important. Uh, then how can we deal with this in the framework of gas kinetic theory? Because gas kinetic theory don't consider surface diffusion. So for us, it's a really tough problem, uh, the new challenge, how we can implement gas dif uh, diffusion, surface diffusion into the gas uh, kinetic theory framework. So we rely on first, kind of way we have started, uh, yeah, we work on, work with uh, uh, Edinburgh group, this uh, simulation done, American dynamics simulation done by uh, 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 Marshall uh, Berg at, at Edinburgh. So we want to attract information to build up a sort of a boundary condition type for, for kinetic simulation. Yeah. But they need the experimental really, experimentalist to help them to get a real kind of uh, how particles really interact with the surface, help them to build, find the right uh, potential model to use. Yeah. And uh, we need to also need to to know what kind of geometry effect. So if we can design some like nanotube, this, we know the geometry. Then we can run MD. Then we can also run kinetic simulation. Then we can compare with experimental measure of 
macroscopic quantity. That's a way, I think, to go forward to gradually develop a new, new uh, framework, really. So that's why I come here to seek whether we can you know, work together on this kind of topic. So my conclusion is simple. Current kind of way of doing to predict the like permeability for a nano pulse probably does not work. We need a kind of new flip work. Even like a commonly used a pulse decay experiment to predict the Darcy permeability, it won't work for highly confined nano pulse. So, but there's a very limited choice of experimental uh, method we can use for this type of shell, type of material. So we urgently really need to build up a new theoretical framework. But that really rely on digital imaging technology, experimentalist, and we can work on the computational based on kinetic theory type approach. Okay, yeah, that's what I want to talk. So I would like to thank my, uh, Lei Wu is a, was my PhD student, now he's a lecturer. Yeah, it's just kind of, and uh, he's, Ming Tai is uh, his, uh, my postdoc, work on this. And uh, I work with Jason Lewis and Matthew Berg at uh, Edinburgh University. And uh, Jin Sun Ma of Hello World, he provides digital imaging of this. So 